Hey guys, Subtle Static here. Welcome to a, another video. Um, this is lesson three for our serum course that we've been putting together now. Um, and just as a bit of a disclaimer, if you haven't watched lessons one and two, I'd probably go ahead and watch them now, just because you'll learn a heap of things along the way um, and you'll be able to understand this video a lot better. Um, you'll just have a pretty rough idea of what you're doing within serum by that stage as well anyway. So today we're gonna to be focusing pretty heavily on wavetables. We're gonna learn how to use the editing tools within Serum to make your own custom wavetables. Uh, and we're also gonna to touch on formulas a little bit for Serum as well. And I'll even teach you how to make Serum talk as a speech synthesizer, kind of, in a way. Um, so like at the end, I'll show you how to make this synth. There we go. That is actually saying pigeon in a synth voice. Um, so if you listen carefully, you can kind of hear it. Um, but anyway, all right. So if we just click this little edit button here, which is our pencil in the square, we just have our standard saw wave from Serum anyway. Um, these tools down the side here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different I guess, shapes that we can draw on our wavetable. So for instance, with this one, we can just draw little things. Each of these ones, obviously, they just draw a different shape. Um, so. You can draw some cool stuff. Um, these four down the bottom here, um, this one just makes like everything linear. This one smooths it all out. And this one nudges stuff up and this one makes things really noisy. And like, yeah, you can interchange those a bit. So like you can smooth it all out and just have it like that. Uh, this thing down the bottom is whether you can draw them in mirrored mode as well. So you'll see that just changes depending on what you're doing in that side. So yeah, that's kind of the basics for these ones anyway. Um, now what we can do is if we nudge this up to here with our flatline tool, we've just got a square wave. Now what we can do is down here, we've got a whole heap of little plus things that we can do. So you can add more if you like, but I'm gonna show you an easy thing to do. So here we've obviously got this the square wave, two square waves happening here. On our second one, let's just select that. And to make this a sine wave up here in our bin section, we can just do that. That's the easiest way to get a sine wave. Um, so now we've got this and we've got this. Um, so what we can do between the two, if we just select morph and go crossfade, you'll notice that our number down the bottom here changes from one to two to one to 256. Um, but what's happening here is between the square wave and the sine wave, we've got 256 frames crossfading between the two waves if that makes sense um it's probably easier if i show you with uh lfo um so we'll just do something like this and then we add that to our wavetable position so you'll see it just fades in between a sine wave and a square wave so that can be really handy if you've got one crazy looking wavetable to another one and you just wanna be able to morph between the two. So now what I wanna show you, um, now that you know how to basically crossfade between different waveforms, if we go to initial preset again, we want nothing loaded up and we just go to our edit tool again. Um, I'll just show you how this little bin section works again because I didn't properly explain that before. Um, so obviously I just showed you that that one gives you a sine wave. What this does, it works very similar to Ableton's operator where every bin that you add on full is an extra sine wave frequency into your waveform. So I'll demonstrate it. It almost sounds like it's going on up an octave each time but and kind of makes like a chord, but you'll notice if I play it now, it sounds pretty normal. Um, so that's kind of how that works. And you've actually got like 500 and something bins to play with. Um, these bottom ones, they just mess with the phase of each of the bins. So let's put that one up on full and you'll notice the phase changes on each of those. So yeah, that can come in handy. Um, let's remove that though, because we're not gonna need that now. 
Uh, so down here, we have a little formula box, kind of like a serum command box. Uh, so what we can do, let's say, let's make a sine wave just using commands. The command for a sine wave is sin brackets minus x times pi, close brackets. Now we've got a sine wave. Um, so that's a really complicated way just to get a sine wave, isn't it? Um, why is this useful? Well, you can do some pretty crazy formulas. So for instance, at the end of this formula, um, just in the brackets still, we can go times y, and then we get this. So just from adding two extra characters in our code, we've got a really crazy little wavetable going on here. So if we were to modulate that in our LFO, sounds like this. It's like a super phase bass. Um, have fun mixing that. Um, but yeah, it comes in handy if you know how to use your commands. I'll actually link a really helpful page in the description. Um, feel free to check that out if you want to learn about the coding more because obviously I would need like a full video to explain the coding side of things. Um, but anyway, let's go back to our initial preset. If we head over here, um, what we can do, all of these little tools that I've shown you, let's do a nuts one again. Let's go out a second one, do something like that. You, that's kind of the same thing. Um, let's do the whole crossfade thing again. So morph crossfade. Now what we can do is if we go to process, we've got a whole heap of different tools. Um, now look, with these ones, experiment yourself with these because there is so many here, they all do different things and the best way to learn about what these things do is basically click and learn. Um, so let's say, let's flip these frames vertically. So you'll notice there that that flipped the waveforms. Um, you could do flip horizontal, like swaps the phase. So yeah, those can be pretty cool tools. So just feel free to mess around with them. Anyway, you get the idea. Just play with those ones heaps um, and learn what they do. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you how to do that synth that I showed you at the start, I'm gonna show you how to make that because it was really simple and really easy and it took me all of 10 seconds just about, or maybe a bit longer, but I'll show you how I did it. So down here in our formula, let's do quotation marks, pigeon. Now that sounds nothing like pigeon. Um, so what we'll do, we'll get out of this. If we put our LFO like that, and then just assign that to our wavetable position. Uh, we'll change that to an envelope actually. Let's uh, swap that around. So we'll make it go like that. Chuck our unison up to about five. We're already just about there. We'll enable our sub, just to give it a bit more bass, direct out so that it's not affected by any of the effects that we're gonna put on here. So if we go to effects, we're gonna add hyperdimension. We're gonna add a compressor and some reverb. So for our hyper, we're gonna leave that how it is. For our compressor, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna select multiband. We're gonna put the bass up a bit and the mids. And for our reverb, we are gonna put in a low cut on the reverb. Um, and that's just about it. So yeah, that's the basics of learning Serum Wavetables. So look, at this stage, you could go back into your editor and if you didn't want it to say pigeon, you could make it say cat. Or you could make it say, let's, let's make serum say serum. So it kind of works as like a speech synthesizer in a way, but it's heavily distorted obviously into waveforms. Um, but yeah, look, I really do hope you guys have learned something from today. It's been a bit of a complex one. Um, 
All right, so next lesson, what we're going to be talking about is just more kind of how to modulate different things within Serum because like down here, we've got a whole heap of different, I guess, macros and mod parameters that we can map things to. Um, you've got key mapping, like note mapping and velocity mapping that can come in really handy. Um, and like, I'll even show you how to make like a sequencer kind of thing with Serum as well. Um, so... As you can tell, Serum's a pretty powerful synth. Like we've made this thing in a matter of a couple minutes. And it sounds really cool. Um, so look, that's about it for today. I do hope you've learned something. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Or check out my Instagram, send me a DM. I'm usually pretty quick to get back to you on Instagram. Um, that's just at subtle static. Anyway, hope you guys have a good day. Hope you learned something today and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.